All right, we just finished solving both the or problem and the and problem. We're going to solve one more uh, logic problem. It's called the XOR or exclusive or problem. And in this case, the Ys have a very different uh, pattern to them. So it's, it's very similar to or in the sense that we have a zero, a one, and a one, but the ultimate difference is that we have uh, a zero down here. With the W2 here, the bias term at negative five, this was our OR solution right here. This was the AND solution that we just worked out. And the question is, what can we do to change these three parameters, W0, W1, and W2, such that we hit this target in set of targets instead? And really, if we start from the OR side of things, really the only case that we need to fix is is this case here so i'm i'm going to uh pause for a moment and and let you play a little bit with different w's uh to see if you can uh achieve something that better approximates our desired solution for all four of our cases here okay so you've had a chance to play a little bit with different possible w's and uh, what you have discovered is that there isn't a solution. There, are, there is no set of Ws that will actually solve this. And let's go back to the geometric problem uh, approach to really get an understanding of what's happening here. So uh, this is the, the OR problem set up here. The thing that we have changed now is that we have put a zero here. So we have a zero there and ones in the corners. And a, and a zero down in that lower left-hand corner. And what we talked about before was that our single computing element, what it does is it assigns a dividing line between the zeros and the ones with some transition uh, in between. And just looking at it ge geometrically, what you'll find is that there really isn't a, uh, such a line. So I this line here does not solve the problem because we have a, a zero sitting up here. And there's just no way I can't, uh, no way to, to set a line here to, to uh, separate the zeros from the ones. Okay, so then how do we go about trying to solve this? Well, let's go back to our original uh, intuition here. Our OR uh, solution, down the right hand side here, it almost gets the answer right. It gets this one right here, it gets it right here, it gets it right here, but it's not getting the answer correct here. If only we had some sort of a way to tell us when we were in this one unique case here, such that, uh, such, so that we could actually push the output value uh, closer to zero. And, and staring at uh, the, the solutions that we've worked out here, hopefully you can see that our AND solution that we have already worked out does exactly that. So in some sense, it says, no, I don't need to make any changes here. I don't need to make any changes here. I don't need to make any changes here. But right here is, I, I'm indicating that 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 we need to make a change to the output and 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 so the what the suggestion here is that is that we can actually construct a network where we have uh two units in it uh, one unit that uh, implements the and and another unit that implements the or and then we can introduce a third unit that takes their outputs and combines them together such that we uh, end up with the the desired solution so let's look at that next. So that's what I have drawn out right here. So now, instead of a single computing element, we have uh, three different ones. And really, we have two uh, different layers, so to speak. So well, layer zero is our inputs. Layer one is the, are these intermediate uh, solutions uh, for our OR and our uh, AND. And layer two will be the, the final output. So let's, let's play with wiring this up. And, and then we can work out uh, what, uh, what these Ws ought to be. So first off, uh, X0 is going to project 
to each of the, the two neurons here. And X1 is going to project also to, to those two neurons. So they re are receiving the same inputs, just as we saw with our OR and AND solutions. Let's, let's set this one up as our OR and this one as our AND. With W0 here as 10 and this one as 10 and the bias term as negative 5 then uh, we're actually going to implement that, that or or very close to it. With the, the AND unit, we're going to choose those same parameters and a bias of negative 15. And then the outputs here are going to be the inputs to uh, layer 2. And so the remaining question that we need to solve is what are those Ws? in order to make this work out properly. So when zero, zero is presented to this composite network, X zero, which is right here, is going to be zero. And X one is also going to be zero. When we're on this row here, X zero is going to be really close to one. Uh, but x1 is going to be essentially zero. All, all of these are actually approximations, so I'll drop the tilde there. This row here, we will have a one and a zero. And this one right here, we will have a one and a one. So looking at the inputs to the layer two neuron, we really only have three different cases. We have uh, a zero, zero case, we have a one, zero case, and we have a one, one case. And, and so that in some sense kind of simplifies uh, the problem. We, we don't have a zero, one case coming into this neuron. So, so what should we choose for our Ws here? Okay, let's try one set of Ws here. Let's in order to, in that very first row, in order to achieve this, something close to this zero here, let's, let's assume that this is uh, negative one. So that means our net input here is negative one. And, uh, and then the question is, what do we set the other uh, two uh, weights to? So let's handle those middle two cases. We only really need to focus on this parameter right here. Let's assume that this is a two. And what that means is that our net input is one for each of these two cases. And let's assume that this parameter here is negative two. And if that's the case, then we're back to negative one over here. So f of negative one is something on the order of 0.27. The one here is 0.73. So notice that those are symmetric where they add to, to one. This is 0.73 and this is about 0.27. So this solution here that we have is actually quite uh quite on par with what we want here we're certainly not close to zero or one in this case but all four of our cases are heading in the correct direction they're closer to the correct solution than the incorrect uh, solution so what do we need to do in order to uh to fix this well let's let's do what we did with the and solution which is to increase the magnitude of our parameters so one possibility is to set w to the, the bias term to negative five this parameter here w zero to ten and this parameter here to negative ten what that does go into a different color here what that does is instead of a net input in the first row of negative one we now have negative five 
here we have five and five and negative five. So once we apply that sigmoid nonlinearity that's uh, right here, that means that for the first row, we are at about 0 0.01. For here, we're at 0 0.99. Here, we're 0 0.99 and 0 0.01. So no longer those approximations, but something really close to where we wanted to, to actually be. And, and so this is one possible solution to solving this XOR problem with, uh, with multiple uh, units. In fact, there are lots of different solutions that are possible as we add more units, say, to this layer one. Just as far as terminology goes, uh, one can think of this as the input layer. Uh, and this is the output layer. And this middle layer is traditionally referred to as the hidden layer. And in fact, as we get into deeper networks, we, have, we will have many, many hidden layers in between our inputs and outputs. All right, so that gives us a, a bit of intuition about how to solve these the, a little bit harder problem. And, and in fact, we can solve pretty complex problems, even with these two layer kinds of uh, networks. Uh, next up, we'll work on a little bit of code to solve this problem.